A lot of you asked me to do VTuber drama. So, what happened within the last week? VTuber ruins career with this tweet. So we all know about Twitch, which recently being pretty garbage when it comes to taking away pay from creators, For dropping every- Recently? Twitch is recently being pretty garbage? Please, please. We went down to a 50-50 sub split, but also just making some really dumb decisions like getting rid of the hosting feature. Well, we've recently- Dude, I- Twitch sucks, man. Dude, why am I watching a VTuber for Twitch news? Quite a few VTubers within Holostars going over there and testing out the streaming platform because they either like Twitch, cover wants them to, or they just wanted to give it a try. Those that went over seem to enjoy their time. However, Sarah's fun of Hololivian has recently considered streaming on the platform to test it out and diversify her content. But that all wasn't until just a few days ago, when Sarah's Fauna at the end of her Civ 6 stream commented on her desire to stream on Twitch, stating that she is starting to reconsider it after trying to watch someone on the platform that she wasn't subscribed to. If you don't know, if you subscribe to someone on Twitch, you don't have to deal with ads, you get emotes, and I believe some other features, but those are the two main draws. I know, bro. I think t Twitch is crunch a little bit. The only reason why I stream on Twitch instead of on YouTube is because I have a ton of followers on YouTube and I don't want to make a spectacle out of my streams. I like the fact that I could do streams that are relatively smaller by size. Uh, I have the people that actually want to watch me live. They know where to find me if they want to find me. And I'm here with my friendly amount of viewers and life is wholesome and happy. That's the reason why I stream on, on Twitch. In their position, I would just stream on YouTube. They are, they have streaming channels for YouTube. My channels are a YouTube video upload channel. So I am so much happier streaming on Twitch where I don't actually have to deal with the massive thing. That's why I do Twitch. Well, when Fauna was watching this creator, she was hit with an ungodly amount of ads, saying they were insufferable, making her experience pretty bad. True. Twitch ads are so bad. So bad. They could give you like six 30-second and skippable ads in a row on Twitch. And I got so many ads, which I know everyone's been complaining about lately. And actually, I find I found it quite insufferable, like True. the amount of ads I was getting. The only reason Fauna has been considering using Twitch is because of their many community features like channel points, special game integrations, and some other minor things. But eh, eh. The only advantage of Twitch is raiding other streamers. That's the only advantage of Twitch. But making your audience suffer through the unbearable amount of ads isn't all too worth it for her and many other creators as well. Now, these ads have been an issue for a very long time now and they've started to get worse as time goes on with twitch even incentivizing their creators to pretty much kill their audience for a very good amount of money for some people this offer here from baru shows that if he played six minutes of ads every single hour for a total of 155 hours this month That's he'd insane. receive an extra forty-four thousand dollars on his next twitch payout that is, that is a lot insane. of money life-changing for so many people but six minutes of ads is a anyone that could make forty-four thousand dollars off the ads it would not be life-changing for them like let's be real here i to put this into perspective you're right forty-four thousand dollars is a lot but only a channel that makes a certain amount of money would be able to make that much money with ads all right a small streamer would not make that much it's not like this this uh new twitch idea that if you put enough ads in your videos you get a life-changing amount of view of money that's not true that's not true only the people that are really well off are the people that would make what would be considered a life-changing amount of money for another people that's not as well off? So I think that's, that's not phrased exactly correctly in my humble opinion. A lot. Of course, many have said they would just take the offer and just gift everyone in chat a sub, which is actually a very good plan and likely what Baru and others are going to be doing, but we'll have to wait and see. As speaking of VTubers on Twitch, we have a very massive situation that has happened with a whale VTuber eh? by the name of Toastify. Oh, yeah, As you can saw... see here on the screen, Toastify has disabled their Twitter account after a massive cancellation due to several reasons. We'll start with this tweet. I wouldn't say massive cancellation, bro. Let's reserve that for the Nux Takus of the world, okay? That reads, quote, a comment in four parts. It starts off with Toastify saying that AI art is cool, but trying to pass it off as real is very cringe. Then this tweet doesn't show it, but in a now deleted tweet, Toastify used AI yeah, artwork and tried passing it off as real art. You could tell it's AI art because look at the fingers. No actual artist will make fingers like all wiggly and wobbly like that. Also, the way the hair just stops in the middle of the eye. And the coolest and funniest way to prove this is AI art, the stripes on the socks Continue after the socks end. Do you see this? <laughs> it's, a, it's like the biggest L I've ever seen in my life. But in a now deleted tweet, Toastify used AI artwork and tried passing it off as real art, telling people he got it from Skeb. Then after many pointed out that the- They called him out. They're like, bro, 
it's not true. It's AI. He's like, no, bro, I'm telling you, I commissioned it really, I swear. <laughs> Art was clearly AI, he made a twit longer apologizing for using it, saying he panicked when being called out and lied about it. Hey everyone, just wanted to apologize for using AI art and lied about it. I got curious about AI, decided to make some for myself just for fun. You know what? Valid. And one of them came out really cute, I decided to upload it. You know what? I understand the draw. Once I was called out, I panicked and decided to lie about it, which was a big mistake. <laughs> And then, since I publicly lied about it, I kept pressured, I felt pressured by myself to continue with the lies. But that's very stupid. <laughs> Now I get it, AI artwork is pretty bad for many reasons and using it for fan art is looked down upon, but this was nowhere near- It's worth looked down upon because AI art, AI generate art based off the art of other people. Kind, it's art theft with extra steps. That's why it's looked down upon, it's not just looked down upon. Canceling him for since people make mistakes and that's fine. But what people took issue with is that not even a day later, he decided to go live on Twitch to talk about and farm the cancellation in an attempt to defend himself further. This led to even more things coming out out about him apparently claiming to be inside of cloud nine which he himself has claimed was because he was grinding to join c9 we had others like bow and sins pointing out that many of toastify's emotes were traced from vienna's bows and shy lily's emotes so before continuing I, I that makes a lot of sense to call someone out for something like that however a lot of emotes are traced like a lot a lot of emotes are traced and let's say, like, for example, let's say this one this bow emote and this toastify emote like it's based off the aqua meme right it's not traced traced, but it's heavily inspired. Anyway, it's extremely cringe to just rip off other streamers' emotes. Like, like this one, come on. Then people started claiming him and his alleged alt account here on the screen were buying their accounts, which we'll get into <laughs> in a moment. Since yet another instance of tracing has also come out as shown here. And here's a side-by-side -side of the models if you'd like to compare them. We've also had Kenji pointing out that Toastify had a fake hate DM posted on Twitter that was saying he'll never be as big as Kenji and then laughing on stream about Kenji getting hate for it. Dude, there are so many people that do this. It's so annoying. Not to call out names. Someone reached out to me and said, hey, Look at this tweet of this person that's getting insane amounts of likes by making believe someone was hating on them for their race. Should I make another account and then DM myself from this other account saying, I can't ever support someone like you because you're enter, you know, any race or whatever you want, trans or freaking anything. Someone asked me if they should do that, if it's a good idea, if it's a good, um, good business move. <laughs> Are you out of your mind? You, you want to you want to grow on Twitter and get followers because you make up someone hates on you? What are you doing? Is that really what you want? No. All of this led to Toastify announcing his graduation, but then canceling it and just leaving and disabling his Twitter account. But now back to his alleged alternate account. This account here, Selium, was being accused of being Toastify's alt account because he is using his old model. So to prove it, he went live with Toastify and the two of them talked in a Discord call about the situation. Eventually, VTuber Sins joined the- Okay, a piece of advice to everyone on the planet that streams. Do not ever address drama on stream. Ever. Make a well-crafted video. Write a script. Show the script to somebody else to review first. Dude, when I got into my drama, okay, all right, do you have any idea how many people I, I spoke to before doing anything publicly? The first thing I did was I talked to Muda, I talked to Moist Critical, like these were the first, I talked to Quiet, I talked to Animac from Anime Upper, he's like one of my best friends. So I, I talked to so many people about this stuff like a bunch of VTubers, like never ever go live to address drama. Even if you're 100% right, it could be taken so wrongly just because you're doing it stupidly. Call started calling them out on all of the things we talked about previously and it was a chaotic mess. All of this caused Sins and Toastify to go trending and if you want to listen to this full conversation between Toastify, Selium, and Sins, it'll be linked in the description for you to do so. This whole situation has had many friends of Toastify drop him and completely cut their ties with him. Now I know th they were never friends. There's definitely some more smaller stuff in there that I may have missed, but that's pretty much the entire story as to why Toastify has left and graduating and completely disappeared off of Twitter for now. I don't know if he'll ever come back to the VTuber community, probably not since he stated he has a better opportunity lined up than being- Nah, uh, he'll come back. Cool. Everyone comes back at least once and test to test the water, see if they have a way back. Of course, this guy doesn't, he's, he's gone. No self-respecting person would collab with uh, like an actual liar like this, like a straight out caught liar that doesn't want to admit to their mistakes unless they're called out time and time again. The amount of 
times this guy's lied, apologized for lied, and then lied again is like mind-blowing. This man, unfortunately, if he does have a career in VTubing, it's a very, very small one. We'll see. Let me know what you guys think about that entire situation. As it's now time for some rapid rabbit news, like Ollie, Selin, and Zeta having their amazing Apex collaboration with each other, and Selin stating that there will be more to come. For example, Takanashi Kiara and Pomu finally having their collab with each other this week. It is finally here. We also had Gargura beating Little Nightmares, Hololive ID's first generation receiving new outfits this month, and I think that's all that we have. Bye bye. None of that's really news. Hollow Live Kobo fans annoy Hollow VTuber. The collabs between Hololive ID's Kobo Kaneru and Hollow Star's Regis Altair have been nothing but great because of how well the two of them mesh. Hell yeah. Stop! <laughs> They're easily. Did he really just show a clip of her screaming to talk about how they mesh? It's like, look how well they mesh. Shows a clip of just her screaming her head off and him just kind of sitting there. <laughs> One of the best duos inside of Hololive, and anytime they're live together, fans know it's going to be nothing but fun. However, there has been a recent issue arising from these collabs, specifically inside of Regis's chat whenever he isn't streaming with Kobo. And that issue is from fans pestering him about where Kobo is, how she's doing, when the next collab would be, or just generally bringing her up in the chat for no reason at all. The I mean, I get that too. I don't, I wouldn't consider something like that drama. You just ignore it. I, it sucks, but you ignore it. I got messages in chat today asking me things that I just don't want to answer because it's not your business and so I just ignored those messages it's as easy as that issue has been growing and just a few days ago fans inside of Regis's chat while he was streaming on Twitch decided to bring Kobo up and I think Regis has had enough because he had this to say not gonna lie kind of get I, I know Kobo's great and all but kind of gets annoying when people um bring her up like unprompted like all right hollow live you gotta get this man soundproofing you gotta get this man some foam panels to put on a ceiling i get that she's awesome i know she's super cool because you know i know her kind of gets annoying when people just you know bring them up of course it's completely understandable for reg to be annoyed with his chat constantly bringing someone else up and asking him about them especially when they aren't in the stream i mean it comes off as rude and that you're only in their stream for the specific streamer it's true it is rude but do you have any idea okay T to talk about how rude the average person in chat is, you go live, okay? You're streaming, well, and then someone else that shares an audience with you goes live, okay? Um, we'll call him Streamer X, okay? So Streamer X goes live, and Streamer X and I were friends, all right? We collab a lot, we're homies, we, ha we have an overlapping fan base, okay? If I'm live and then Streamer X goes live an hour into the collab, I will get messages in my chat saying, oh, hey, Nux, Streamer X is live. I'm gonna go leave your stream and go watch his instead. Bye. Do you have any idea how often that happens? It happens every day. And yes, it is extremely rude. One of the things you gotta live with as a streamer. Mentioning it does not help. Just don't bring it up. You just gotta ignore chat. You gotta talk to chat when they're nice. Talk to chat when there's something you can add. But ignore chat when it's just something stupid, petty, and rude. You have a thousand people watching you, bro. You have a thousand people. Think of a thousand people you know in real life. How many of them are assholes, okay? You got pretty much the same exact quota in your chat, except they're also anonymous and will have absolutely no repercussions to what they say, which just makes it worse. And in this case, these chatters may be there just for Kobo and- I'm, I'm saying this, by the way, as, um, this is not as criticism. I mean this as, like, constructive- not even constructive criticism, I'm not even criticizing, I totally get it, I'm not criticizing talking to chat. I'm just saying, constructively, and with much respect, ignore chat when they're being assholes. They want attention. The people that say stupid things in chat, they want attention from the things they're saying. So if you ignore them, you are literally neutering them so, so hard. That is my humble opinion and piece of very, very wise advice. And that could be how Regis sees it. There's a reason many of the Hololive members have the rules stating to not mention other streamers or streams unless they themselves bring it up, because as Regis said, they aren't even part of the conversation or the stream, so why bring them up? She had no part in this conversation. She wasn't even in this stream. Dude, I'm just Regis gonna ignore these comments from now on. Regis is 100% right, but he should have ignored it the whole time. I feel bad for him, because just by mentioning this, now you have people talking about him more. Him mentioning it? is just gonna have more people mentioning it in chat just to annoy him. Cause then they'll be like, oh, he was reading the messages all along. I have been. I can be pretty savage right now, but I'm gonna choose to hold my tongue. I get that people want to see the two of them collab, but they can't just collab every single stream or every single week. Just wait to see their schedules, and if there's a collab, cool. If not, then just wait for the next one. There will definitely be one at some point. But my man Kyo out here teaching you how to watch streams. Like, bro, if there's content you want to watch and they're doing that content that you want to watch, you should watch that content that you want to watch. <laughs> the viewer experience with Money Man.
I'm just kidding, bro. You're a cute dude. I like you, man. But on another topic involving Twitter, we had Shy Lily applying for verification, but was instantly denied seconds after submitting the application. Yeah. She's been requesting for Twitter support Messed to have up. an actual. She should totally be verified. She's huge and she's so nice. Human review it instead of a bot, and at this point has begun bargaining with Twitter, saying she'll bark for them if they review it. Twitter's verification system is pretty garbage, but hopefully one day Lily can be allowed into she the will. club. She definitely will. I got rejected like four times before getting verified on Twitter also instantly every single time. I salute you, Lily. I really hope you get verified. Dog, a lot happened in the last week, apparently. We've talked about VTuber Mikkei Neko quite a bit on this channel before, and unfortunately, we're doing so again today after she has gotten into a bit of a situation with another VTuber by the name of Delotaya, who we've also talked- Okay, I know Delotaya. Who's Mika Neko chat? Catch me up here. Rushia? Dog, you are joking. So we got Delotaya and Mika Neko. Right here are our characters. This is Rushia's actual account, and uh, we got Aloe actual account. So two ex Hololive members are beefing. Dog, I'm sad to hear this. I like both of them. I really like both of them. God damn it, why do they have to beef? We've talked about VTuber Mikkei Neko quite a bit on this channel before, and unfortunately, we're doing so again today after she has gotten into a bit of a situation with another VTuber by the name of Delotaya, who we've also talked about a few weeks ago. The situation comes from a post Delotaya has made on her PixIV fan page, stating that there has been a rumor going around about her due to a stream at the end of the month by Mikkei Neko. Everyone, thank you for giving me encouragement. This post is about a rumor related to me that began to spread in the last month, as I don't like to make my usual fan feel uneasy. I thought about whether to post this or not. However, it would be allowed. Preventing a brief report. What was the brief report? The situation comes from a post Delotaya has made on her PixIV fan page, stating that there has been a rumor going around about her due to a stream at the end of the month by Mikkei Neko. Delo states that in Mikkei's own words, she said, quote, A particular female independent streamer made some bad remarks splendor about me. To a gossip stream. Oh, that's what's happening. Okay, so apparently she says that she told Japanese Keemstar about her. All right, I'm I'm keeping up. I'm catching up. I know I can't. Okay, I understand what's going on. Female independent streamer made some bad remarks slash slander about Mikkei Neko to a gossip streamer. Delo said, "Quote: While she did not explicitly state the name of the streamer in question, she stated it with a wording that allowed one to contextually understand she was referring to me, which in turn has caused fans of Mikkei to turn to Delo Taya, sending her DMs questioning about the situation as well as slandering her. Oh, so to God. clear everything up, so basically now both sides." Sides are saying that the other side slandered each other. She's saying that she slandered her, and her fans are saying that she in turn slandered her because she said that she slandered her without proof that she slandered her. Ah! Okay, all right, I'm following. This is like chess. Holy crap! Up since she has no memory of doing this, Delu went straight to Mikkei Neko. However, upon doing so, she was informed that Mikkei heard it directly from the gossip streamer himself via voice chat, stating that she also has video evidence of it, but will not hand it over to Delotaya to prove oh. it unless this turns into a court case. With that's messed up. Like, yo, I want to know what they actually said. Well, I'm not gonna tell you unless there's a lawyer. Which I kind of really get if it's serious, but also if it's not that serious, like, we don't know what's going on. So we can't judge who's being fair versus unfair. This is just sad. Lawyers getting involved. Mikkei Neko has also refused to speak with Delotaya unless lawyers are present. So Delotaya sent a commission to a law firm. Again, you have to realize that in Japan, this works completely differently. Like, this does not work the way, you know, let's say beef works in the, in the U.S. These are people that both worked with Hololive. They both were kicked out of Hololive. They both had some of the most extreme, extreme legal issues when it came to their actual job and livelihoods. I get why they want a lawyer present, unless it's like, I don't know. I don't know, bro. Firm to contact Mikkei's legal advisor. Delotaya stated, quote, however, Mikkei Neko refused all contact and replied exclusively with, quote, I'm not lying, and quote, I can't cooperate in regards to sharing the video evidence. She even blocked me on Twitter. Delotaya ended her statement saying she had no other way to clear up this misunderstanding other than bringing this to the public, and from here on, she has no plans to mention this case again and just wishes to continue her activities as normal. Now we move on to Mikkei Neko. I feel bad for Delotaya and for Mikkei Neko. This just really sucks. Who has also posted her own response to this through her PixIV fan box, stating that she's in trouble because of speculation with her name being brought up again without her permission and will be handling this with her lawyers. God stating damn. that she will return to us with an update about this in the future after taking the proper legal action. And so that's all that we currently have on the situation. I could not find the stream where Mika- Knowing little behind the scenes details that I that I've heard through the grapevine that I don't know if I believe, I obviously will have some sort of bias 
but I, I really like both of them. And I'm really sad that they're beefing. God damn it. Why do mommy and daddy gotta fight all of them? Okay, Neko mentioned the gossip streamer in Delu, as I believe it's been privatized or deleted. Either way, this has been a really crazy situation for me up. to wake up to, and I believe it's best if people do not take sides as of right now, since we don't really have the full story. Agreed. However, in my personal Agreed, opinion, bunny I man. do think it's really weird that Miki Neko refuses to provide the proof at all that Delu said any of these things about her, as it makes it seem that it's all been falsified, but again, we have no proof of whether it's true or not. Agreed, that is suspicious. Um, especially because, you know, of her, her previous history and how she actually left v Show, uh, not v Show Joe, um, how she left Hololive originally. But that said, we don't know. We don't know. She also is scarred from her experiences getting kicked out of Hololive just like a few months ago. Just a few months ago. I get why she would be scared to do anything publicly. Last time she did something publicly, she got into a lot of trouble. I can see both sides and I don't know the truth. So I have no opinion. It's just really sad. Of course, when it comes to this situation, you're free to discuss down below, but please remain respectful to others. As we've also had a situation involving Any Color, the company behind Niji Sanji, updating their form for reporting malicious behavior to them, asking that when you do report it, you screenshot it and include the YouTube URL, tweet ID, and tweet content, because usually when they get to the reports, it's already been deleted. We've also had Hololive announcing that Hololstar's uproar will be receiving their 3D distribution streams. This news has unfortunately Unfortunately, upset some fans because they are concerned that Hololive is playing favorites towards Holostars and not giving some of the girls 3D models even if they debuted before Holostars uproar. Also questioning why I- Hololive is a massive, massive company. They don't care about anybody. They are a massive conglomerate that wants to make money, okay? The streamers, they're wonderful people. They're wonderful, amazing people, and I wish them all the best of luck ever. The company that is Hololive, they're gonna do whatever they think will make them more money. So if that is giving, let's say, Holostars before Hololive Indonesia 3D models or whatever, well then that's what they're gonna do because they're a business and the business needs to exist to make money. They, they spend a lot of money, they make a lot of money. They make a lot more money than they spend, but there's a lot of money changing hands. It's a company that makes decisions based on what will make them more profit. Iris has yet to get a new outfit, yet Holo ID is also getting their new outfits very soon. Truth is, that is weird. Iris has been around for a while now. I don't know why she doesn't have a new outfit yet. And Cover likely has an answer to all of those questions. And yeah, because it makes them more money that way. They're doing it for a reason. Yeah, because it makes them more money that way. Likely because all of Holo Star's uproar is inside of Japan, so it's easier to give them their 3D models. And when it comes to Iris... Yeah, it's an interesting theory. I don't know. This is outfit that is still coming. However, they are still making changes to the model. But again, please remember to be respectful of VTubers, the talent inside of these companies, and have yourself a good day. Bye bye. All right. One more piece of drama for the last week. The Mika Neka situation got worse. Oh no, I really didn't want it to get worse. The rules inside of Hololive are changing as we have recently gotten confirmation from Petcora that they cannot stream over a normal debut or 3D reveal streams, which was already a thing or at least an unwritten rule. However, Petcora has since informed- I saw Hololive getting hate for this. Hololive wants every streamer to get big. They, they want their best for every streamer to get big. Okay, they don't want Pecora streaming when they launch Streamer Y, because then there's, let's say, 10,000 people watching Pecora, and those 10,000 people aren't gonna go move to watch Streamer Y. But if Pecora wasn't streaming at that exact time, well, then you got 10,000 people with nothing to watch, so they're gonna watch the debut of Streamer Y. That's the mindset that goes into it, and I actually think that doesn't sound weird at all. It's a company. This makes a lot of sense. I spoke to a lot of the people over at OTK. They got into drama recently, so that's exciting. But anyway, um, they have different shows and different um, events that they have on different channels from different people in that org. And they set it up that no, you cannot stream your own perspective. They make only one person be able to stream an event at a time. They had a game called Loot Goblins. Loot Goblins was only streamed on one of their channels. A lot of the members were part of it, but they didn't stream their own perspectives so that all the views could be funneled to that one channel. Like they would all be live before, they would all raid that one channel, and then they would have that event on that one channel. That makes sense from a business perspective. I saw them getting hate for it. That, oh my God, they're like forcing all the streamers to conform to these times. I sort of get it. But at the same time, Hololive is much bigger than OTK. This is the flip side of the of it, which makes it an entire issue. Hololive has over 60 streamers. So in order to really organize it so that none of the 60 streamers, that's a lot of streamers stream every time there's a new event, you're actually hurting their revenue. You're hurting the individual streamers revenue a lot 
in a way by doing this as well. So I do kind of see both sides. At the end of the day, Hololive is the company. They own these. They have these contracts in place. Sending them hate for something like this that I think is somewhat justifiable is wrong. Informed us that this change now includes all of Hololive production as a whole, meaning ID, EN, JP, and all of Holostars. That's wacky. Because they're growing exponentially. They have 72 streamers. Let's say each one has an event once a month, okay? So that means every day there are two events, okay? I, I know that this isn't the case. I'm just doing this math to put it into perspective for you guys. Let's say there's every month you got one event per streamer. That's two events a day that no one would be able to stream at the same time. That's two, let's say... Two hour blocks of a day that no streamers would be able to stream. I'm just saying, to put, try to put it into perspective. Scheduling must be hell. It really must be difficult. Right, debut streams, 3D reveal streams. That's what it used to be. Which, I guess, there, there aren't that many of those, right? There's only like one big debut stream every, let's say, a few months. I personally believe this change is great because it gives the VTubers their time to shine, but of course, that's not the only reason Hololive is making this change. Since these streams on average bring in more viewers, so the less people overlapping these streams means the more active viewers and donations they'll get towards that one stream, meaning they make more money in the long run. It's a great decision for them to make not only as a business, but to make these talents happy since it gives them their time to shine to bring these streams but of course i completely agree with that it does make the talents happy but that's only making the talents that debut happy imagine when hololife continues to get bigger and bigger and bigger right can you imagine if let's say they had 300 streamers and then every time there's any form of debut in any branch in any country no other streamer because this is their living too they're making a living off this right so they wouldn't be able to stream for those times like i could see where it gets a little extreme of course let me know what you all think of that change as we also have a short update from yesterday's story oh, no. involving mikai neko and delutaya and that is that mikai neko has been getting harassed by tons of people in japan and overseas because of it people dude she just does not get a break oh my god she got harassed for allegedly having a boyfriend a few months ago. She, she ended up getting kicked out of Hololive. This poor girl. Upset about it, calling her a liar and some horrible things. Me Again, I don't know. I don't know if she is lying or isn't. I have no clue. I don't know the truth at all. I'm just watching the same as you guys, but goddamn, this poor girl. She has stated in a new fan box post that she has no connection to the expose industry, so she has not spoken with the gossip streamer and will continue to disclose these slanderous remarks to her lawyer. See, the reason why... I, a lot of people had a problem with this was because when she got kicked out of before she got kicked out of Hololive by the boyfriend drama, she did talk to a quote-unquote gossip streamer about it. So it's a lot easier to connect her to a gossip streamer just on the surface level. That's a sucky situation, though. She has also stated that the IP disclosure and log storage on board sites has been done and is looking to do the same to Twitter thanks to her lawyer. Again, this entire situation has been disgusting, and I don't look forward to seeing it getting any worse than it is. Same I really hope there man. is a solution to everything same going on. Bunny and man. for anyone out there harassing VTubers, sending them death threats, please stop doing Doing so, True, it's bunny man. Again, as I mentioned yesterday, I don't think there's a point in taking sides since there is no proof on either of the sides. But in some really good news, we are finally getting the Pomutori collab today, which by the time hey. you see this video has already happened and was likely an amazing stream that broke the internet. But th it didn't break the internet, but it is nice to see Niji and Hollow Live streamers actually being able to collab. They've been wanting to for a long time, and it's really nice to see them be able to do that and the companies be able to look over the fact that these other companies are essentially their rivals in this business space so you gotta love it but that's all for me i'm sorry for such a short video today i really wanted to talk about these topics but i am very busy so i didn't have time to include anything else but again Face that's Kyo. all for Face me bunny. Bye. well anyway all of you check out kyo he, he's he's a nice bunny fellow we, we love to see it um thank you all so much for joining this week of vtuber drama with nuxanord like subscribe and follow me on twitch stay weird fam